Check, check. Mic check. Hey, Jay. What a U.S. Open this week, huh? Oh, my gosh. Wasn't that incredible? I cannot wait to get into it. Let's do this. Yeah, let's do it. This is Golf Nation. The show that brings you interviews with the best and brightest people in the industry. Join us for a round as we learn about their life, business, and so much more. Golf isn't just about playing the game. It's about connecting with others and getting away from our everyday lives. Now here's your host and the CEO of GolfCritique.com, Jeremy Lee. Oh, Golf Nation, what is up? We are back with you with another great episode. This is episode 42 of the Golf Nation podcast and always brought to you by GolfCritique.com, the best search engine in golf. If you have not been to GolfCritique.com in a while, you need to go check it out. Did you know that we can book over 5,000 courses now in North America? I did because I've been going through connecting all those booking sites Ah. personally. (laughs) But the best part about it is there's no booking fee. No booking fees. You are booking directly with the golf course. We love our course partners. We love golf courses. We're driving business back to the golf course where it should be. That's where the money should be going because we all know how much it costs to to run a golf course. It's very, very expensive. So to all of our course partners, if you want instruction, we have over 150 instructors on the platform now, and we are growing. I think in six months, we're going to have 1,500 instructors on the platform. Easily. And we have some big news that we'll talk about later on in the episode. Oh, yeah. But we have a great guest to get to today. He is somebody who loves the game, loves building a team of passionate people, and most of all, his family. A man that started as a territory sales manager moved around the country growing with the same company for an incredible 20 year career and has been leading the sales team for the past 12 years. Now joining us from the great city of Chicago, please help me welcome the national sales director of Wilson Golf, Mr. Chris Russin. Chris, what is up? Great to have you on the show. How's it going up there in Chi-Town? It's uh, it's great. We've had uh, we've had a great summer. Uh, we've had a, a good fall, and uh, uh, it's been uh, it's a crazy year. But uh, we're uh, excited to uh, to have you on the show or have me on the show. Oh man, Whew. I tell you, a crazy year is not even beginning <laughs> to talk about what this year has been like. We gotta get yeah, into yeah. U.S. Open. We 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 we're gonna start there because yeah, we just gotta get into it. Oh my goodness! If you guys saw my <laughs> posts on social media. Uh, we started a new series after the round, and we're going to just kind of be recapping for all of those who have honey-do lists and just don't have the time to, to sit down and watch the tournament. We're going to try to do a Sunday recap for you every week of what is happening on the tour. Mm-hmm. And wow, like DeChambeau, when he came into the week, it was all talk of, Oh, we swing in a four inch or four degree driver. He's just going to, you know, he's talking about a 48 inch driver. All he's going to do. He looks like he just come off the world, world long drive championship tee. Mm -hmm. Like he said, he worked out every day for the past six months. Yeah. Didn't miss a day. Which did you see that was uh, the complete opposite of what Matt Wolf was saying? I did not see Matt Wolf's comments. What did yeah, Matt they, say? They just compared the two of, you know, and I mean, when you, when it comes down to it, that very well could have been the difference this weekend. I mean, Matt Wolf, like over quarantine, he said, you know, he was hanging out, chilling, not doing too Doing much. things 21 year olds should do. Yeah. <laughs> DeChambeau was grinding his ass off every single day and it obviously paid off for him. Oh my gosh. Uh, crazy he dominated on sunday and chris man did you know that dechambeau tiger and jack are now the only three people in the history of the game to win the ncaa the u.s amateur and the u.s open i did not know that that's a good uh, that's a good fun fact right there so that's a good i said uh, you know that's what i was like i was like are we talking about golf royalty here future golf royalty I mean, it's pretty clear cut. I mean, you think people who break history early, Spieth, Mm -hmm. Rory, you know, Jack, obviously, Tiger, obviously. But, I mean, they're cemented in the game. Like, all of them are going to be major Hall of Famers. Uh, I think, I I don't know, it's crazy. But what he did this week, 
it was Johnny Miller esque. I mean, mm-hmm. I mean, it was pretty impressive. Six under par. He was the lowest score, obviously, uh, on Sunday. On the or really, it was on the West Coast or the, the West Course ever mm-hmm. held held at um, at Wingfoot. But I will say, as a as a past superintendent, listening to what Gil Hans did to the course. Uh, I don't know if Chris, you heard of this earlier in the week, but he had a 22,000 square feet of greens and he removed a bunch of trees to make it more open. Yeah, I agree. You got seven inch rough, but at yeah. the end of the day, honestly, for the best players in the world, you start opening it up and you make larger greens. They're going to play good. Like they're going to shoot under par. And it was a big difference. I mean, you're talking 12 shots between Ogilvy in 08 mm-hmm. or 06, whenever it was. And DeChambeau, 12 shots. That's a big, big, big difference. Yeah. What really uh, boggled my mind is obviously everybody knows that DeChambeau hit 23 out of 56 fairways, which is 41% thereabouts. But his greens in regulation was 64%. So he was like still not even hitting the fairways and still making green in regulation. I think that's a testament to his strength. To yeah. be able to get out of the long rough and still hit the green yeah. in regulation. Well, Chris, you're a pretty good stick. Uh, four yeah, handicap. I yeah, I try to these days. <laughs> well, that's good. Well, I mean, look, I mean, look at Deschambeau's swing. I mean, if you talk to a lot of, a lot of, especially old school um, players, they really like those straight arms chipping and putting and around the greens. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's doing that in full swing. And so yeah. he's trying to build the most consistent swing he possibly can. You know, we'll talk about this, uh, about Wilson Golf and what the incredible things Wilson Golf is doing and, and Wilson brand in general. But when he came out on tour with the, with the one length irons, did Wilson ever think, man, maybe we should try to go after Bryson? Yeah, you know, it's 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 an interesting, you know, you think about what Bryson did. I think the one thing that I take away from 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 Bryson is um he stuck to his plan and he executed his plan. Um he had countless naysayers, he had people uh you know doubting what he could do. And I think from anyone, if you sit back and think about who Bryson is, I I applaud him for for what he stood for and what he believed was right and and what he wanted to do to chase greatness. And um you, know, you mentioned a couple names there um, earlier. You, you talk about Jack or Tiger, and you mentioned Jordan. Uh, you know, Jordan speaking, he had a, a great run, and, and he's having a lot of difficulty now. That just shows you the difficulty of what Jack and Tiger have done, and, and only a few people have done. And, you know, will Bryce, Bryson be able to keep this up for the foreseeable future? And um, he, he's, he's made the changes. Does he have the termination? Will his body stay healthy? Um, there's a lot of different things about uh, Bob Bryson. And, you know, speaking of his equipment, it's uh, it's unique. It's, um, you know, you, you really have to design completely from ground up. You can't take any current product at this point in time and just make it one length. And at this point in time, it's not something that uh, that, that we've we've looked into. Um, uh, but it's uh, it goes back to, again, a testament to what uh, what Bryson is and how he thinks to make it work for him. And he stuck to it and, and kudos to him for for uh, taking the, the trophy away from uh, Gary Woodland. Yeah, no, it's, uh, man, pretty crazy stuff. You know, I even think about the four-degree driver. So I used to do some long drive stuff way back when Long Drivers of America was just Long Drivers of America before it was the world, you know, before they got t- brought on by the Golf Channel and, mm-hmm. and made it a really, I mean, it's a pretty big circuit now. Like, oh, yeah, a lot yeah. of people are doing that now. D- d- is Wilson Golf going to dive into the four degrees, you know, the five degree drivers? I mean, back when I started doing it, it was hard to find those. You could go through Crank Golf or, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. very select. But, you know, and, and if you think about uh, Jason Zubiak was a big Cobra guy back in the day yeah. that did those four degree drivers and, and they were huge. And then they kind of went away and then they came back. And now with Bryson bringing it to the main stage, it's going to be interesting to see. If that transitions, because let's be honest, you put a four degree driver, you tee it up three inches <laughs> and you swing as hard as you can. That ball is going to go a long way. Mm, yeah. With <laughs> not for me. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, I mean, look at, well, and I, I'm so glad that you brought up the health, the health thing, because let's not, let's not forget. Tiger looked just like Bryson when he came out on tour, little scrawny, little, 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 mm-hmm. you know, just an average college kid, you know? 
and boom, Tiger starts blowing up and everybody's like, wow, Tiger's getting so big. And, but now look at Tiger. I mean, Tiger's had major back surgeries multiple times. And I think that's the big discussion now is, yeah, Bryson, I mean, to me, Bryson's bulked up twice as much as Tiger did. Yeah. So, I mean, a what do you human think body, those injuries are going to come from swinging as hard as he is? Oh, or? no question about it. I, I feel like more injury might come from him with keeping his arms as straight. Well, as you got to realize he's trying to keep the triangle all the way through the swing. So his back has got to turn in order to keep that triangle. There's no, there's no breakdown of that triangle. Right. I mean, both of yeah. his arms are fairly straight through the entire swing. Yeah. Which I think is going to end up which in him is overextending. Which is going to crap out of his lower back. Yeah. Yeah, so it's going to be interesting to see how long that that actually works. But uh, like I said, he's a smart dude. There ain't no question about it. And, you know, there was even people when he was on the... Did you see that he spent three hours after his round on Saturday mm-hmm. on the driving range just banging drivers? Do you know yeah. how hard that is? Go hit the driver yeah. for three hours. You won't be able to <laughs> no. walk the next day. Yeah, no. You know, people say golf's not a sport. Okay, go get your happy ass out on the golf course. Go lug 50-pound yep. bag. Mm-hmm. Walk 18 and tell me you're not tired after five hours of doing that. Yeah, my gosh. I played 27 holes on Sunday. <laughs> and yesterday, my lower back was stiff oh. like I've never felt before. So, so, exactly. so crazy. So, well, the U.S. Open did not disappoint. I mean... The, the one good thing about it is I think that it opened up a lot of people's eyes. I think we kind of got the tiger effect for a long time with, you know, it was just such a beautiful swing. You had Adam Scott that has such a beautiful swing and uh, you know, all the greats, you know, really had really powerful Ben Hogan, Bobby Jones. They all mm-hmm. had really beautiful swings, but then you got Matt Wolf who's mm-hmm. got a wild swing, you know, and I even compare, you know, yeah, a lot of people compare him to Jim Furyk. But I mean, I think it's even crazier than Jim Furyk with that left left heel way up in the air. What what's your thoughts on that, Chris? I mean, whew. yeah. I, I again, I it's it's interesting. I go back. You know, they they did a pretty good article about him and his his teacher. And you know, his teacher was one of those things. Is um, one of his main points was don't worry about what your swing is. Um, worry about what 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 the ball does. And I think that's a mm-hmm. uh, I. I, I I reckon that I, I think that's good advice for everyone. Um, you know, we, we play in a game um, where the reality is do what you can to get the ball in the hole, have fun, but getting the, the bottom of the hole as few shots as possible. Um, and that goes anywhere from instruction to, to do the things that work for you or to equipment. You know, a lot of times people go down a, a rabbit hole of I got to play this certain brand. Well, maybe that's not the best thing. Maybe go see your local PGA professional, go see your local retailer, get fit, be brand agnostic. And quite honestly, play what's the best product for you. And I look at Matthew Wolf and thankfully his, his instructor did that said, you've got this athletic ability. Um, let's hone your skills. And, and there's not one, and I guess I'll show you, there's not one way to swing a golf club and it, it's great. So um, definitely different. Um, but you know what? It works for him. And I think you couldn't have set, set it up any better you had two individuals that are starting to break that mold of, of the typical prototypical, how you got to stand in your posture and um, they're playing some great golf and it's fun for the game. I mean, I, I thought it was a blast. I love watching these guys just rip it. And I think it, I personally think it's great for the game. Um, I, that's what I think what people want to see. And I know that there is some traditionalists that, that think it's bad for the game. I, 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 I question anything that has stayed the same um, in today's life. And it's, it's uh, mm-hmm. we all have to embrace change in an appropriate manner i wonder if the usga is blood's boiling right now <laughs> it's okay they'll like, get over it oh. yeah why would like why would they be though like well because they're traditionalists like they and they're just they want to make it swing on his no 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 it's just like, it's what? just power they, they want to re, they want to remove the power from the game they want to keep it consistent but look listen we need to evolve with technology now, do I think that we need to go to 8,000-yard golf courses? No. I think that we need to do what Ernie Els is talking about, where we have 20-yard fairways, where we shorten it up to where we bring more people in the field, where you can't pull out a driver and hit it 400 yards because you're going to be in the creek. Because if you looked, uh, Tony Finau was a perfect mm-hmm. example. There was a 300-yard hole out there, which, by the way, number nine, they should have played it as a par 71, 
I don't know why. Mm. Number nine was a joke. Like driver wedge. And even yeah. Matt Wolf with a standard driver was hitting driver wedge. Yeah. Into a par five. I'm like DeChambeau eagled that twice in round yeah, two and two on four. Yeah. <laughs> round four. I mean, for a US Open, really? Like it just didn't make any sense. I wish they would have went to a par seventy one. I think it would have brought in a lot more people. Yeah. And and I think that that's what the game needs needs it. Yes, we love the dominant players, but we love the dominant players when it's it, the entire field has a chance to win. I'm sorry, the U.S. Open does not allow the entire field to win. True. They they, mm-hmm. they eliminate all all the the short hitters, and I I just don't understand that. I wish that we that's that's where I like to go with golf. Let everybody who's made the field actually have a chance to win this golf tournament where it's shot placement. It's some holes are bombing. Mix it up a little bit. Don't mm-hmm. just make it all about, okay, let me, and that's what Bryson did. He literally said, okay, this is how you're going to set it up. I'm going to go mm-hmm. to a four degree driver. I'm going to tee it up three inches and I'm going to hit it as humanly possible as far as I can. And, and look what happened. He dominated. He, he just, he destroyed the field. Mm-hmm. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Do you, you think know, that's ever going to turn into a formula? Well, if they ain't figured it out by now, it ain't going to happen. You know, they've had, what, 100 years to figure this thing out? So, you know. 100 I, years, and this is the first guy that's using the same length irons? No, but I don't think it's the irons is the problem. The driver yeah. is the problem. So, any any thoughts from Wilson Golf on that? Yeah, I mean, I also look at him, you know, we people talk about his length all the time, and can, can he move the ball? Of course he can. You know, it was, um, you know, we just had the BMW Championship here in Chicago a few weeks ago, and, and, and to see where he, uh, some of the, you know, I've been fortunate to play there a few times, and to see where he hit some of the shots and the clubs he used um, was unique. Now, while he's long, man, there's a lot of long players. Uh, let's, let's not forget that uh, how Rory, what he can do with a golf ball. You mentioned Tony Finau, what he can do with a golf ball. Dustin yeah. Johnson. Yeah, exactly. Um, one thing that we can't take away from Bryson is uh, he may have he can hit it off a tee, but um, he he was really impressive with his iron play. Mm-hmm. Um, do, don't we can't take away? Yeah, only hit sixty some percent of the greens. His short game was spot on. Sure, he spent countless hours putting. So it, it, as much as we talk about his driver, uh, man, he 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 was he was firing on all all facets, and that's one of the things that. I think goes on said is the amount of time that he's put in on a short game, particularly wedges around the green that 50 yards and in, in, in his putting. Um, so mm-hmm. I mean, the, the, I don't think you still, you can't crown a champion without having all facets. Um, you know, you mentioned that you did some long drive stuff. Yeah, again, there's a lot of people out there that get the ball a long way. And it, even on tour, uh, he wasn't even the distance leader in distance this week. I don't believe uh, no. in the open, yeah, but that's um, correct. kudos to him for, for putting it all together and, it goes back to mindset. You know, you, you think about some of the greats, they, you said it, they know they've eliminated probably 85, 90% of the field. And right now you watch these other players are watching Bryson at the ball and they're like in shock and awe. Well, um, Bryson's smart. And you just mentioned he's, he's, he knows what he wants to do. And he's, he's kind of a little bit of that tiger intimidating some people. And um, you know, he's, he's found his little niche and I'll be interested to see, what that continues and what that shapes the game to go forward in the future. It's yeah. uh, it's interesting. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Cause I think the biggest thing is what's he going to do with his body? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because he already sure. looks very stiff. Like, yeah, he does look stiff. He looks like he, it's not very fluid. Yeah. So, it, and he said that he's trying to go bigger. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I heard that. He so, like pounds on. That's impressive. Something. But I will say, yeah. I mean, like I said, you look at those long drive guys, I mean, they're massive human beings. Like, they're not sure. playing around. So if he's going that direction with his well, short game, it could be sick. I wouldn't say Kyle Berkshire yeah. is that big. but No, Kyle's <laughs> different. Well, and like Jamie said, Lasky. I mean, he was a small dude. And that's like mm-hmm. Rory. You know, even Justin Thomas. They're not very big. Yeah. I mean, you're talking about guys that I think will hurt in the later years. You know, guys that put mm-hmm. so much work, but they're closer to the ground. It, it, it'd be interesting. The taller guys, I think, definitely have the disadvantage for yeah. the length of career. But, but, uh, but yeah, no, great U.S. Open. Very proud. Um, I, 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 congratulations. Can't take nothing away from him. He did everything he said oh. he was going to do. He mm-hmm. didn't. He didn't change. He didn't. I mean, he just played amazing golf, and and kudos to him. But I will say, his putting stance is 
robotic. It is very odd. I think he, is a he, robot. Has a, he has more more degrees in his putter than he does in his driver. It's like six <laughs> degrees or something like that. That's so funny. That's so funny. All right. Well, moving on, we're going to Cor- 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 Corrales. <sighs> Risky. I have the worst time. Punta Cana. Correct? Corrales. Punta Cana. Uh, yeah. See? Yeah. See, you just do it better Better'd than do I do. Some, uh, yeah. Got to well, work on your Spanish pronunciation. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not doing so good there. But down yeah. in the Dominican Republic, yeah. uh, pff, can't blame them there. Going to go a little no. vacay, play a little golf. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be we, great. Chris, I think we need to just hop on the plane and say, hey, we'll, 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 go, for, we'll go check out some stuff down there. Yeah, that would have been nice to have this uh, this podcast uh, live uh, from the local uh, floor <laughs> resort. But uh, yeah. next time we'll do that, okay? Well, oh, yeah, we'll sip it on a beachside pub and just uh, enjoy yeah, sand uh-huh. in our feet and all that good stuff. That would be great. <laughs> yes, yeah, I'll let it slide. All right, well, last year, Graham McDowell, mm-hmm. uh, come out of nowhere, won. Uh, so he's right. defending champion, champion this year. Um, but it's, oh, I didn't realize FedEx Cup points were being awarded for this. Yeah, I bet all these the guys are loving time. that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I did say or something a couple of weeks back that people who play early, there's more of those guys that actually make it to the tour championship than anybody because they're because or into the playoffs because they're just getting their points early and then they're just cruising it all the way through. So maybe they did. But 7,600 yards. Is it really that long? Yeah, that's what it says. Holy crap. It's a long one. It's really open too, all along the coastline, ocean surrounding at least nine holes. I mean, Chris, are we going to eight thousand yard golf courses? This is getting at I don't know insane. It, it, it's crazy, but you know, you also when you see some of these other courses that are you know still seventy two, seventy three. I, I think you mentioned before, it's all about setup and, and what mm-hmm. you can do. And um, you know, they talk about wider fairways, narrow fairways, longer. It, 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 some of these guys, it just doesn't matter. You you go back to um, you know certain other opens where you know it's it's it's. Uh, it starts getting to these wide open courses. They just, they're going to keep ripping it. So I, I, I couldn't agree with more. We talked about that balanced approach um, to, to really be that, that uh, unique um, equalizer for the field. Sure. So I hope it doesn't go to 8,000. Oh, me neither. I hope yeah. it just, it's I just going to eliminate. a little extra distance in there because it's right on the beach. So it's so, well, it's probably so windy. windy. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. So it's like a like, Hawaii course where they're throwing it 350 yards. Yeah. It's going like to be really interesting. hundred yards a roll a, for yeah. 450 off the team. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All downhill, downwind. Half the course they're shooting exactly. into the wind and half the course they're shooting with it. <laughs> I know. Right. So crazy. Well, we got some players to watch this week. Will Zalatoris continues to impress. I think this kid's mm-hmm. here to stay. He's top of the Corn Ferry tour, tour, which that's actually rolling off the tongue a lot better than when it first came on. When it came from (laughs) web.com to Corn Ferry, I was like, what? What do we call this thing now? Yeah. One day it's going to be the golfcritique.com tour. That's all that's we hope. You heard so. it here first. <laughs> I love it. Love it. So, but yeah, so he's, he's man, 81% of greens this season. Mm-hmm. Whew. How about those numbers, Chris? 81%. That's, a, a, that's impressive. Yikes. Extremely. That's going to keep you in the top 20 pretty often. Yes, it will. Yeah, he has 11 straight top 20s mm. in the Corn Fairy Tour. Yikes. So, no wonder he's the most expensive on the yeah, DraftKings this week. Yeah, I think that's the longest streak, uh, yeah. top 20 streak in Corn Fairy Tour history. Wow. Mm-hmm. That is... Yeah, he's awesome. killing it. Mm, that's crazy. Well, Hendrik Stenson, uh, he's going to enjoy this tournament this week. Back for the first time. Uh, actually... Back, he's never played here, yeah. but he's got to feel really good about choosing to go here because he played like crap last week. And <laughs> so this is probably going to be like, oh, man, this is like vacation for me. I'm sure he's going to enjoy that. Uh, a couple past champions, uh, Arizona's Nate Lashley is in the field. Uh, Bryce Garnett is in the field. And uh, Dominic Bozzelli. Bozzelli? Bozzelli? I don't know who Dominic is. Bozzelli. Um, all Both, core uh, fairy tour winners, huh? Uh, yeah, not Bryce, but Nate and um, Dominic, I believe, have won at this resort yeah. on the Corn Ferry Tour. Well, I so guess I mean definitely now that, people to watch out for. Yeah, with the new system of how they do no no Q school anymore. I mean, yeah. pretty much we're gonna see everybody who's coming to the PGA Tour is gonna be a winner on the Corn Ferry. So it's going to be interesting to see the dynamic. Do you miss the Q? Do you miss Q school? I kind of miss Q school. Kind of do too. I, I, <laughs> I don't know why. As a 
you know, we all played competitively a little bit. And that, something about that six day grind was, was, uh, uh, that was something that was, I think, in all of our hearts. So, yeah, I kind of do miss the Q school a little bit now that you bring it up. Yeah, it's, I was kind of bummed when they said that they were going to get rid of that. Um, but, you know, we got to evolve. I'm asking the USGA to evolve, so I got to evolve <laughs> myself. You know, it is what it is. Uh, uh-huh. Again, Akshay uh, Batia is back in the field, this 18-year-old phenom. Yep. Uh, I guess we got to call him a phenom. I mean, if you're making it to the PJ Tour – Last week, he was the youngest kid to ever. Uh, uh, no, uh, second youngest kid, wasn't he? Yeah, he's the youngest player to finish in top 10 of a stroke play event since Justin Rose at the 98 huh. Open Championship. So, not the first, but the youngest since Justin Rose. And he's Rose. a lefty. Yeah. Which I think is even more impressive. Yeah, because, that's... I mean, let's, let's be honest. Mickelson, Weir... Mm-hmm. Gosh, Bubba Watson. Why? Oh yeah, Bubba. That's a lefty. There's yeah. not very many out there. It's about the same ratio as lefties and righties in the, in the yeah. real world. Yeah. But uh, no, I think this kid's here to stay. Uh, I don't love his decision of of skipping college. Uh, we talked about this last week yeah, on we uh, when we had Marissa on. You know, we were talking about the women's tour, how they see a lot of that, where they talk about you know Michelle Wee coming out. And uh, talking about Lexi and um, uh, Lydia Ko. And, you know, our, our feeling was, hey, if they would have spent three years in college, those girls would have dominated, dominated the tour. Hmm. And I just think, I think they, did, they're, they have a great career. They're going to be Hall of Famers. I mean, I'm not going to take that away from them. Mm-hmm. But I don't think that they dominated and I just think that that's what college does. And I, and I, I have a feeling if I'm going to be honest, I think down the road that he'll regret that. Yeah, he probably will. Cause who's but the other kid that did that? Sean, you live and you learn. Um, Chris, do you remember that? Um, Sean, didn't, didn't t- Hey, let's go back further. Didn't Ty Tryon do that? Ty Tryon did do that. He's in North Carolina. He's trying to come back. Did you hear that? I did not know that. Interesting. Yeah. So he's a North Carolina boy. And I had, you know, it's funny that you say that name because they were reaching out, trying to make some, I think he went through some troubles in his life Okay. and, uh, he's trying to make a comeback. He's trying Mm. to make a comeback to come back. Good for him. And, but then there was a Sean, Sean, I can't think of Sean's last name, but he came out of high school. I think Mm. he again went through some stuff. Now the good thing about Akshay is he's another North Carolina kid, but his, uh, his, his family's very. Um, very fluent family, did very well for them. I think his dad's a doctor. Um, he's been playing tournament golf with AJGA forever. Right. So it'll be interesting to see how that decision goes. But So uh, are we doing DraftKings this week? Uh, yes, <laughs> we are doing DraftKings. So DraftKings is unique. I know he's trying to keep me on schedule because we're, we're moving through. We, we got to get to Wilson Golf. So real quick with DraftKings. So we're going to do a pretty something pretty cool. We've been bombing DraftKings. We just... Yeah. But so many people could have got free memberships with golfcritique.com. And <laughs> I'm I, because we literally bombed once again. Yeah. So now we're going to do something fun. So now we're going to bring thanks to DraftKings for having an awesome platform. They create, they gave us the ability or they give everybody the ability to create a league. So we created our own golf nation league that's brought to you by golfcritique.com. And it's a member only league. So all you have to do is sign up to be a free member of golfcritique.com and you can get into the league. And we're going to let, for this week, we're going to let the first 200 people in and it's $10 buy-in and you're playing against just the average golfer. You're not, you're not playing against the pros and mm-hmm. DraftKings. It's one negative. Trust me, there's professional DraftKingers. You know, oh, there's yeah. pro- professional fantasy guys. We're not professionals, obviously. And obviously our, our picks are not going to matter because we've been doing <laughs> crappy lately. Um, but it's going to be a lot of fun. So it's a $10 buy-in. As soon as you join golfcritique.com, just hit us up on a DM or um, we'll reach out to you and say, hey, do you want to join our Golf Critique uh, Fantasy League? And it's just going to be a way to have fun. And we're playing 20 places. So $270 to first place. And something special we're going to do is for every person who wins, uh, comes in first place each and every week, we're going to give you a free membership. We're going to upgrade your membership for free to golfcritique.com. value, so 
two seventy plus that if we can get eight if we can get the two hundred field, it's gonna be pretty awesome. Yeah, that's gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah, it's gonna be a lot so of fun. So before, but Join be- in. before we get to Wilson Golf and what Chris and his team are doing, I got a huge announcement for GolfCritique.com that I wanted to talk about. We are excited to announce, and this is going to go out on the Golf Wire here in the coming days, but we are extremely excited to welcome Landscape Unlimited and their Landscape Golf Management. 52 courses are coming to GolfCritique.com. Oh, so excited. Such an amazing company. A top 100 company in golf. And for them to put their trust in us and what we're doing and what we're doing for golf is just a sign of things to come. We are so, so very blessed that they, they, they entrusted us to, to, to take this journey with us because they know that we're new. They know that we're young. They know they're growing with us. But they see what we're trying to do because we care about the courses. We care about the instructors. We care about the resorts. But, again, if you're not on GolfCritique.com, book your rounds for free. A hundred, and I always say the best thing about GolfCritique.com is – 100% of round revenue, 100% of, rev, of lesson revenue, 100% of package revenue goes back to the partner. We don't take any of that money. That is that is what is so incredibly great about us. Even the perks that you can get by becoming a member, they get 100% of that revenue too. So that is going to turn, if we treat our partners better, then the partners are going to be able to do more for our golfers in the long run. And that's the way our system works. And it costs you $5.99 a month to be a part of our platform. Right now, you can save 40% off a round at Southern Pines Golf Club. 40% off a round. Let me do the calculation. It's about $20 savings in one round. It costs you $5.99 a month. It's a pretty, pretty cool, incredible deal. Yeah. And we don't take nothing from the courses. So we love, we love it. We're doing so many great things. If you're not part of it, now you can get into DraftKings, do some member only. We have some brand experiences, and we're giving away twenty five thousand dollars. Definitely get just for signing up for for free and a trip to come see me in Pinehurst and play some golf. And me. And risky. Sorry, I can't forget about risky. You always say that on me. I love you, risky man. I love you. Let's get into Wilson. Wilson. Oh (laughs) man, Uh, we already had a little mini conversation with Chris, and I'm blown away. Like Wilson Golf. We're going to talk about the perception of Wilson Golf. Mm-hmm. And what Wilson Golf really is. It was already my favorite golf brand, and this is just going to solidify it even more. Well, so. Chris, we're going to dive into this because let me just tell you, what Wilson Golf does globally as a as a company, and not even Wilson Golf, just Wilson the brand, mm-hmm. sure. you are going through some of that stuff, and we're going to talk about that now because I want to know, you know, I was going to talk about how, you know, you got into golf. I, listen, you're you're a good player. I love that stuff. But I think we have so much to talk, and I don't want to waste any time. But talking about us, I want to hear about Wilson Golf and what the vision of Wilson Golf is. They've been around since 1914. Let's go into what Wilson's doing, what's the goals moving forward, and why you love, obviously, you love this company. You've been with them 20 years, 12 years as the leader of this company in the sales division. Let's talk about Wilson. First question for you. Go ahead. What is... what? What is Wilson Golf? What is the brand Wilson? Yeah, you know, Wilson Golf is 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 heritage. It's um, it's passion, it's drive, um, it's innovation, um, and it's it's the a quest to be a, a premium aspirational brand. Um, you know, it's it's really unique to be part of a of a company that that has that heritage. Um, we can say we've been there, done that because we have, and and and, re- and no other brand can say that. Um, and it's really been uh, fun to be part of it, along with Tim Clark, who is our, our global president, um, to envision who we want to be and what we want it, where we want to go. And, um, you know, we, we've uh, we've seen the, the, the highs. You've talked about it. We were um, the preeminent dominant brand in, in 60s, 70s, 80s, in the 90s. Um, and while there were some changes made, um, it's been far been really fun to be part of that group that is looking forward and, and to, to take that next chapter um, to respect what we've done in the past, um, but give it the the flair and the understanding of where we want to go um, in the coming years, and um, it's exciting. We've got um, we got a lot of great, passionate people that work for the brand. Uh, I got a great sales organization. We've got great athletes that that promote our brand. 
um, on tour. Um, and we've got a great network of, of, of partners. You mentioned Landscapes Unlimited, which is a great partner of ours. And, um, you know, you, you look forward and say, where do we want to be? And um, we're taking the time. We're doing the right things. We, we are creating those, those products of want and desire um, that are played by the, the best players in the world. And uh, it's fun to really be able to take your time and give them to people and change their mind and their perception of who Wilson is. And when they hit the product, they're, they're, they're blown away by the performance. And ultimately that's probably the most rewarding thing that we do at a brand every day. Yeah. And I got to admit, I was one of the naysayers. Like, I think what it was for me is one that you went through a, like pre Podrick, let's, let's, let's say pre Podrick. Um, Cause okay. I think project probably was the start of bringing the brand back. You know, he won the majors with it and Correct. in the golf industry and just based on what everybody else was doing, Callaway and Cobra and all these different brands that were out there. And I feel like Wilson had a huge 60s, 70s, 80s. And then we mm-hmm. kind of slowed down 90s, maybe. Do we start to Correct. see the slowdown with yes. Wilson in the For 90s? Sure. With the uh, you know evolution of the great big Bertha, I would say that that was probably <laughs> the thing that kind of you know started to evolve and change things. Um, but to, to make it as far as you guys have made it, to go, uh, what'd you say, 107 years? Correct. Yes. 107 year company. And now you're revitalizing the brand. I think that that's amazing. So, you know, we talk about great quality players that you guys have on your belt. Gary Woodland mm-hmm. won the U S open last year. Padraig Harrington, Correct. multiple major Padraig's doing the president's cup. That would have been, or that's the president's cup, the Ryder cup, um, Correct. captain. Uh, we got, uh, Brendan Steele, a fantastic player out of California. Uh, you know, there's all sort of different people playing Wilson products. And do you think that it was maybe the Walmart perspective is what kind of changed the brand? Because you did um, go after yeah. that. You did go after the, you, you broadened your consumer base. You didn't just go after the influent people. You wanted to make golf accessible for every consumer. Yeah, I think it's a, that's a, a, I think a great segue, a great lead in. And yeah, I, there was decisions made as we talked about by Preston Pryor management. Um, and, and, and uh, if I look at reflect back on now, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. You know, you mentioned it probably the best that we make product for all types of players and, um, you know, being part of Wilson sporting goods, we, we have access to a lot of different players. Um, but one of the things we did is there were some, the, the decisions were made. And while we made decisions, maybe not to focus as much on, the, the professional golfer, other brands did. And, and that kind of accelerated maybe some of our decline and in other areas that we maybe lost some focus on who we wanted to be as a brand. And um, it, it was really that refocus on the brand goes back now almost 12 years ago, um, 11 years ago about who we want to be. And um, we, it had to be a recommitment to everything. It had to re, be a recommitment to the brand, to the product, um, to the performance, to changing people's perception of that, to trial, um, to getting the, the retailers and the, the PGA professional, um, their trust back in our brand. And it takes time. And, and um, I'm, I'm very proud to say that we've taken a very uh, strategic path in how we want to engage not only the consumer, but the retailers and the, and the green grass professional. And we continue to have success. I mean, we've had uh, five years of double digit growth. I mean, even this year, we're wow. almost a double digit of growth again this year. Uh, albeit um, having a three month pause in our season. And that, that that's uh, really a, a, a recognize um, the, everything we've done from um, our R and D group to the, the build the sales organization to the, the product that we put out and, and all of our partners that have supported us and just people trying to product and it flat out beats the competitor. So it, it's, it's been a front change. Um, and, uh, but it, it's, it's who we are. It's our, our DNA. And, uh, we, we've, uh, we've come back from, from some, uh, some difficult times, as you mentioned, late nineties, early two thousands. And, uh, we've done a really uh, a proud of what we've done as a brand. Yeah. And that's interesting that you say late nineties, early two thousands, because that's when you joined the company. Correct. You know, if I'm doing my guess, math right, 20 years, I, I guess I was just uh, stubborn. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. So, you know, what kind of, what, give me some insight onto what made you choose. I mean, not a lot of people would have said, in the late nineties, like, yeah, I'm going Wilson golf. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, you know, I was recently out of school working for a, a competitive golf brand that was going through some challenges and, um, had an opportunity, uh, to, to, to move from, from, from Texas up to Colorado. And, you know, back then we still had, you know, that was still kind of coming out of the fat chef days. We had some deep red, 
there is still some residual effects there. And, um, you know, uh, while, while there was definitely challenges, the challenges probably weren't as, as relevant as when I finally got in. And, um, well, yeah, there's difficult times over the first couple of years. Um, but you know, when, you know, the, the vision was presented to us of where we wanted to take the brand, um, at that point in time, um, it, it, there was no doubt that I made the right decision. And, you know, it's great to work with a group of people. I work with a number of people that, you know, while I have 20 years experience, there's um, a number of people that have 25, 30 years experience. And, um, while you have a lot of new blood in, into the company as well, uh, it's great that you have these individuals that have been there and, and the commitment, um, and that's just not just golf, but it's uh, other sister divisions as well. And, um, it's great to see where we are taking it and the products that we're bringing to market. Um, we're really changing how people perceive, um, not only Wilson, but, but golf products in general. No, I love that. And you guys dive into all kinds of things you guys have. I mean, Oh yeah. And they're everywhere. I mean, that's, what's cool. I mean, let's not forget Wilson is a global brand. Go mm-hmm. into a couple of the other highlights of not only just Wilson golf, but what Wilson does as a company in other sports. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's, it's one of the things that, that, that probably is the most impressive thing about Wilson sporting goods. Um, you know, while people maybe look at it individualized, um, there's synergies across our brands that, that create these world-class products. So when they may say, well, what are you doing in this division or this division? It's, you know, I'm able to work with across the platforms with um, people that have very similar skill sets and, and, and products, but they're working for in our team sports division. So when you think about team sports, you got footballs, you got the official football of the NFL. There's not been a, a play in the NFL since the game started that has not touched a Wilson leather football. Wow. Um, That's we've impressive. taken over. Yeah. That's or the crazy. official ball, of the NCAA. So you think about anything about March Madness, it's always played with the Wilson basketball. Um, speaking of basketballs, we're, we're extremely excited of the fact that we've taken over uh, the official ball, the NBA. So uh, one of the our competitors has it for one more year. Uh, we will take it over for, I believe, the next uh, 10, 15 years. So, and again, another big kudos to that. Um, you think about team sports. Uh, if you've ever played baseball uh, and you didn't have an A2000 on your hand growing up playing baseball, it, then um, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm shocked. And then, you know, we have – other divisions, you got Louisville Slugger, you got De Marini. Um, so that you think about the divisions from there. Um, and then I can't forget about our racket division. I mean, coming out of the U S open in New York for, for tennis, um, we dominate in, in market share there. So, yep. and that's just Wilson. Um, you know, we have other sister divisions in the, the ski industry and outdoor industry. Um, but just, you think about the scale and scope of Wilson over, a, you know, well over a billion dollar global brand from hard goods. Um, there, there's, there's probably not a sports uh, moment in most people's lives that didn't aren't connected to a Wilson's uh, product. And um, it's that passion drive of, our, of, of the, the company um, that just kind of pumps through all of us. It, it makes you proud to work for the company. Man, that is incredible stuff. Yeah, that yeah. is incredible. And, you know, does Wilson ever really think about going deep into the ball market or are they strictly focused on clubs moving forward? And is that the goal of, of Wilson? Yeah, I think one of the things that uh, that you'll be seeing coming out is, um, you know, we talked about that strategic shift of where we want to go. And for us, people knew who Wilson staff was. We were, we were known for our irons. And, yeah, we had golf mm-hmm. balls. Um, and it was really reengaging that that consumer back to our, 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 our roots of irons. But you think about we changed the industry going back seven years ago with low compression. You know, Dua was the first low compression golf ball in the marketplace. Um, I'd argue that there's not a single company out there today that does not have a low or a lower compression golf ball uh, in their lineup. And sure. Duo still is the leader in that, that segment. Um, but we also realize no different that we have a very successful D iron. Um, you know, Gary Woodland plays our staff model irons. Um, Bren Steele plays a staff model irons. Uh, Kevin Streeland plays our, our uh, you know, we'll be moving to a new um, staff model iron that's coming out in the very near future. Um, so when we're doing that, we also need to make sure that balls are part of it and, and the golf ball line will continue, uh, to evolve from there. We have a four piece urethane ball coming out called staff model. Um, we have a number of our tour players testing it at this point in time. And wow. we've got some, I think we've got some good things to share in the, in the coming weeks and months on that. But we realize that the same growth we've seen in the irons, um, we're seeing that in, in golf balls, 
we now need to push some of those price points up and uh, the staff model golf ball. Um, and there's going to be, as we start lifting some embargoes, there's some, some cool things we're doing that are, are unique and different in that price point category um, that comes down to um, performance. And it's just the little things. And it's something that no other ball golf manufacturer has done. So we're uh, very excited to unveil that uh, come middle of November as well. Oh, man. So many great stuff, man. Yeah, it's just opened my eyes a little bit because we, you know, we get, yeah. you know, we we see all, you know, Tylus brands on tour, Taylor made huge brand on tour, and we kind of just kind of just kind of lose focus of how many great brands there really are out there. And Wilson, obviously, sure. one of the best brands that people don't really give them credit for, in my opinion. Yeah, you know, because if you think yeah. about them globally, they're a fantastic brand. You know, all the just mm-hmm. from every aspect of every sport, um, which is man. That's pretty, pretty incredible stuff. Yeah, you know, you talk about technology. I think that's probably one of the been the biggest um, uh, levers for Wilson. Um, if someone comes in and, and keeps an open mind, we talked about this to start the show, um, go get fit. I, 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 I tell everyone to go through that process um, and, and don't necessarily be stuck on a particular brand. Um, and I think that was a, been the biggest thing for us as custom fitting, whether it's on course, off course, retail specialty has boomed. People are trying different things and they're realizing that some of these big brands are like, wait a minute, I'm not hitting that as what I thought I would. I'm mm-hmm. hitting this brand, meaning Wilson. I got higher trajectory, tighter dispersion. I'm hitting farther. It feels better. It's at a better price point. Why wouldn't I buy it? And uh, it happens mm-hmm. time and time again. And I think that's probably been our, our, I think for the consumer, that's been the biggest eye opener that um, from a fitting aspect, that there's way better product out there than they think. So I, I would recommend it to everyone. And I would just ask that everyone tries to keep, uh, Wilson as one of those clubs they put in their bag because, uh, uh, they will be pleasantly surprised with their performance. Yeah. I love it. Performance and price point. Yep. That's going to hit 90% of golfers. Mm-hmm. Yes, it will. 90% of golfers right there. So that's, that's a, a, that's a brilliant strategy in my mind. You know, yep. you give a good, good price point and a good product, and that makes a world of difference. So, man, Chris, I know you're a super busy guy, and I wish I had another hour to talk to you because <laughs> yeah, we could I know you got to go. You, you got other sure. obligations. But uh, we, we definitely – I think we're going to do a segment two of this because I think we have so much Love more it. to dive into into Wilson Golf and what, we're tra- and what you guys are doing to really – really show our listeners the brand itself and, yeah. and, and dive into some of those things. Maybe in November, once you have some unveiling of some of those things, um, we'll bring you back on the show and I love it. That'd be great. And go from there. So I'll make sure to deck myself out in Wilson gear next time. Yeah, that's right. It's my favorite, that's right. Bu- uh, my favorite bucket it. hat of all time is Wilson staff. I wear it <laughs> all the time. There you go. Um, all right. Well, Golf Nation, that's all the time we have today. Uh, make sure you check out the show on Golf Hub. If you're not watching it there right now, you definitely should be. You can find us on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, and Instagram as at Golf Nation Podcast and Facebook as at Golf Nation Pod. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions for Jeremy or myself, send us a DM on Instagram or send, me, send us an email at info at golfcritique.com and it'll go straight to me. Okay. Awesome stuff. Well, definitely check out a cool little thing that we're going to be doing for tagging people and following us on Instagram as well. Yep. So we're going to be giving away lots of free memberships to golfcritique.com. Definitely stay for, tuned to our social media. Yes, for what, uh, when we post this episode. So we'll risk you'll put it in the comments and uh, or in the post and make sure that you guys follow us there. So everybody, thanks so much for tuning in. We'll be back next week with another great episode of Golf Nation Podcast. But as always, until then, learn as much as you can, live your life to the fullest, play golf forever. I'm Jeremy Lee, Risky, Chris, thank you so much again for joining the show. And this is Golf Nation Podcast. We'll see you on the team.